So welcome. This afternoon I'm doing a few number sixes with a Tuscan rim, which is sort of inspired by the roof line of Andre Palladio's places. You know, that nice sweeping Italian uh, rooftop. Uh, to get these pots to be kind of the same, I'm working to a stick. Sometimes potters would say stick to it. Doing a double thumb opening, grabbing the clay and pulling towards my left thigh. So there's a little bit of an arch as I'm pulling, which gives it a stronger thing. The thing that's interesting is that if the wheel's going a little slower, there's more torque in the effort being put into it. I'm giving a nice compression to that top rim. So here's the trick. You want to leave a place to grab underneath the clay. And you're pushing out from the inside above, which puts the clay in front of the hand below so that you can get some material up. I'm leaving a nice thick rim here for that palladian. Splitting it a little bit. Now see how it's lower than the top? So the next thing I'm going to do is grab in the bottom third and really bring some material up. Now look at that, I'm going higher than where that stick is. And you'll notice why when I get around to finishing up the pot. This is a rib. The rib is used for sort of, uh, it amplifies the architectural command. So I'm going to push out and look how that top rim is dropping. That's pretty much where I want it to be. And I just want to make sure that the shape is nice and has a nice sing to it. There we go. I'm going to take just a scratch tool. I want to add a little bit of what is called reading. So right below the top rim to give it a little bit of a gesture. And then I'm going to take this tool, which makes dots, and I'll do that a little bit lower. So see we have dots and we have lines. And then I'm going to take this thing, which is basically a peanut butter jar lid, but it's got these little lines on it. So the very fancy architectural name for what I'm doing now is fine dent. So I'm just making sure it's clean. And I'm going to add some fine dent. Okay. So next, this particular pot gets my name. So it gets G. Wolf there. And then I'm just going to start with uh, putting the year on it. So it gets 221 and then because the shape is inspired by Palladio I'm just going to do one above and a box of four below fleur de -lis, which is the signature for Florence so because Palladio did a lot of work around that part of the world I like having a nod that the shape of this top rim is Italianate. So next, I'm just going to, well, I got the water out of the inside, so I'm just going to cut it under. Now this is a tool that I found in Portugal. It's just a round piece of wood with a cut in it. When it's a small one like this, it doesn't have to have a 
hinge. The bigger ones, I like having a hinge. But you get it wet because you don't want it to stick to the interior of this. But I'm just going to put one of these on the interior so that when I go to pick it up, it has a little bit of support. It just makes it sort of effortless to pick the pot up. Ta-da! So there's number one. You always want to sort of get a rhythm going on this stuff. Now I did a little bit of wedging, but I'm just going to check this ball of clay. See how there's a little bit of bumping towards the top? So I'm just doing that to get, get rid of that. I want to homogenize the material a little bit. I'm going to grab at the middle. Go down again. Now my thumb is on the wheel head here, so I can feel how thick I'm making this base by where my thumb is, right? So that's how you tell the thickness of the pot quickly. You always are a little fussy with the interior of a pot because you you don't want it to split when it's drying later. Now a quarter of the pot is up towards the top now the, of the material. And I'm going to grab a medium amount of material and just drop it into that wall. Now before it gets too thin, I'm going to do the, the meteor architectural work of making this palladian rim. So it's a flat rim with a little bit of a bead for holding that. Uh, what I'm going to do next, you know, the, the what do you call it, the uh, fine dent. So this is still pretty thick down here. So you get underneath that and you really give it a lift. You can see how hard I'm pushing out above and that's what makes the power for the clay to get pushed in the way of that lower hand lifting it. I think at one of the classes we talked about I explained it to somebody that was like there was one snow plow pushing the clay pushing the snow out and then the next snow plow was picking it up. You have all these different explanations you can have for doing the same thing. Sometimes we talk about the way water comes in on a wave, you know, on the ocean. It's all about mass moving. Just making sure it's clean on the inside. And I got this one sponge set up so that I can keep the tool that I'm going to use next clean. It's always about, as you get towards the end, sort of cleaning stuff up. again. My name, the date, Florence, one, two, three, four, five, and the poundage. Number six, Oh, and because this is going to a friend of mine uh, in Newport, I'm going to put the name of her store on it, which is Cottage and Gardens. Garden. They're nice people. Joel. So, and then I just did a 2001 on there. 
I need 18 or 20 of these for her. I forgot to do it on this. I'm going to bring this one back over. Let's see. So, other side of the pot. I have uh, a batch of old lead type that I got uh, out of Meriden when the lead type company was still going there. And the, they left the world in the middle 70s. And I just got a whole batch of lead type from them and uh, I'll put them into a, a bar and get all sorts of different names. So this clay has gone through the pug mill but I still want to have just a little bit of homogenizing. And I'll do the same on the wheel. It's sort of silly for number six to do this much, but it's, it just makes the, the throwing more of a joy when you're doing it. They did this in the uh, the Stoke on Trent throwers would do a lift like that just to get the clay so that it would react pretty much the same each time. So it's left over from that. If you if you have a certain kind of clay preparation machine, you probably don't have to do what I'm doing, but I, I have sort of a cruder set up here. worth that early work. There's less work later on if you put in the work of making the clay homogenous. See what I mean? Makes this pull just, just happen. Now you might say, oh, that's almost close, but if I were to pull out this piece of clay without it being higher than that stick, when I did the final setup, the pot would be, oh, I don't know, 20% smaller than what I want it to be. So one of the tricks about uh, throwing or that the place you're putting stuff is uh, not the final place it's gonna be. In other words, uh, you make a shape slightly different to easily get to where you finally want to go. You have to do, it's a process. Things have to sort of stretch out in an even kind of way. There we go again. Now, when I play around with this, it might, it might come down a little bit, I don't know. They don't all have to be crazy the same. They just want to be enough the same that when you put a batch of them on a wall, they at least <laughs> look like the same person made them. you 
you don't want to go past where uh, you start the coggle off. Oh, that's called a coggle, by the way, those, those roulette things. In France, they're called roulettes. In England, they're called coggles. So here we go with the G-Wolf, the date, that the shape is from Florence. Number six. I want the first time I made this on the side of the pot with the fleur de lis in that order. I had a young woman come into the shop and I, I said to her, Oh, this is for Florence, not for France. And she was quite a beauty. And she said, As only a beauty can, she said, I know. Well, it turned out she lifted up her leg and she had this tattooed on her leg i mean what are the what are the odds that the very first person you talk about this being from florence you meet somebody who went to art school in florence and has it tattooed on her leg i couldn't believe it uh being the greedy sort that i am it took two more vis visits before i realized i should have given her a pot so i did but it, like i say it took me Two visits <laughs> to do it. Okay. Anyway, that's my story with the with that particular decoration on the side. If you come into the shop and you go looking to buy one of these, I usually tell that story over and over again because it's kind of more interesting than the Andre Palladio story. I find people fascinating. Okay, you want one more? Should we do just one more? I mean, I'm going to be doing this all day, but you don't need to be watching this over and over again, I don't think. Six pounds of clay. A little bit of a wedge. This is a nice move. When you slap it down like that, when you pick it up, you go like that and it makes it round so that when you put it on the wheel, it doesn't make an air bubble. But I can't remember which older English potter told me that. I think it was George Curtis told me that one. He had a shop in Little Thorpe which is just south of Ripon and just north of Harrogate in Yorkshire. He was a big wear thrower. There's so many interesting shops in Great Britain of the older, older guys. Not much of it is left, but it's in my head anyway. Pressing that interior. There's a hole on the inside, and I'm making sure that the corner of the hole has been compressed. It's extremely important to do that. You'll know if you don't, because they'll get a split right at the hole. This is the part that just is so much fun. Just lifting up that clay. Now as I'm pulling it up here, I'm gonna grab above it and pinch it. So that's, there's sort of two moves happening at once to get that rim. And you can see it's still dumpy at the bottom. So that clay wants to get grabbed. And I just did. Now, if you make one area more thinner than another, it'll start to complain. And I put that under a lot of torque. That's why it's wiggling around like that. Um, but that's how you get clay to move. 
Watch that top rim. It's gonna come, it's gonna fall down into the height we want it to be. It really, this couldn't be any more fun. There are a lot of potters that sort of say to me, why, why in the world would they just sit around making flower pots? And it, it doesn't matter whether it's a vase or a flower pot or a this or that. It's knowing the material and knowing how to get it from point A to point B in a energetic kind of way so that architecturally it has you know, the vitality of the activity of moving the material. Uh, I often say that making pottery on the wheel is basically the laws of architecture in motion. And when you, you have this amazing material that if you put it under compression, it will, the, the more pressure you put it under, the happier the material is and the more polite it will go because it's, it's these long platelets of glass and as you slide them over each other, they stabilize. So compression is a really big deal. The two sort of main terms you use for making pots are motion and compression. So getting clay to move is uh, kind of an easy thing for a student to do. Getting clay to move under compression is a skill. Whoopee. So I think this is enough of this. I hope this has been fun. I'll look at it afterwards and see if I actually had the camera in the right spot and you know whether or not the the microphone is at the right height and you know all the all the other stuff. But uh thanks for coming along for the ride. There are a lot of people that, uh, you know, want me to make banjo things, and there are, the potters are going, you never make one on pottery. So I thought, well, I better do one. And since I have this order of, uh, I need 18 of these for the, uh, this nice, for Jill. So it's always nice to see the same thing get made over and over again. Okay, you guys, thanks for the visit, and we'll talk to you another time. Remember to keep that wet. These interior things are great. Uh, they, I call them a Portuguese lifter because I first saw them near Porto in the north of Portugal. Thank you, Smith and Hawken, for sending me there. Okay, you guys, talk to you another time. Bye.